Hi, I'm Jeremy. I'm Megan. And we are back once again with another episode of Recipes and Recollections. What do we have for them today? We are going to make gourmet pizza. That's the name of the recipe. Um, so basically homemade pizza with a special spice blend. Yum. As usual, let's start with the ingredients and then we'll tell a story straight out of the Across Colorado cookbook about pizzas being delivered on I-70. We're starting with the ingredients for our pizza dough. So the first one is dry yeast, active dry yeast. Sugar. Kosher salt. Bread flour. I thought all flour was bread flour. I mean, yes, uh, but this is better for bread. Um, anything with yeast, this is gonna work a little bit better. Like pretzels? But you can still do it. Uh, mm, I don't know about pretzels. I've never made pretzels, I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll save that for a different video. Different cooking video. <laughs> Vegetable oil. Water. Should I do my, ready? Like sure later. Ready? Okay. Alright, anyway. A W E S O M E. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I need to get my mom and my aunts um, in here because they love to do cheers. Really? They were all cheerleaders in high school. Welcome back. We are making um, gourmet pizza. That's the name of this recipe. And so, what we're going to do is walk through how to make the pizza dough. We're also going to walk through how to make this um, fun like spice blend that's going to go on our pizza. And then we're going to kind of just do the toppings that we want and enjoy a delicious, uh, tasty pizza. Everybody loves pizza. Find I was a, trying to think of someone who Like find me a person who doesn't like pizza. Like that's really hard. I used to work at Papa John's and they there were people that would were allergic to certain ingredients, but obviously they were still. But they're still good at pizza. Even those people allergic to cheese, no problem. Only marinara. Allergic to marinara, no problem. Only cheese. The worst pizza I ever made was no marinara, no cheese, just onions and olives on pizza dough. What? Yeah. Are you sure that wasn't like a prank? No, something? I think they were allergic. They, I feel like I took that call actually. This is a long time ago. But wow. Almost 20 years ago. But yeah, they. Before I was selling knives to door to door, I was. Um, <laughs> yeah, Jeremy's had a very interesting work history. <laughs> selling pizza over the phone. Was that your first job? No. Yeah, that was my first. Pop well, no, no, that's my second job. But my first job, I only lasted two weeks. My first job was uh, at a candy store. Which I think is just like a very fun first job. All right, back to pizza. Again, we're, we get we get distracted. Okay, you're gonna make the dough first. So the first thing we're gonna do is dissolve some uh, active dry yeast uh, in some warm water. So we're gonna do that. I have a pretty big bowl. This is the bowl that I use when I'm like making dough or anything because it's a good size. Any big bowl will do. They also do make a pizza crust that I have used before. Um, I would not use this pizza crust yeast in this recipe. I would just use the original. And this is a yeast to dough, obviously, so we're gonna let it um, come together. Come together! And it's gonna rise for an hour. So I've opened our active dry yeast. I'm gonna dump it. All right, and then we are gonna do one and a half cups of warm water. You don't want this to be too hot, you just want it to be kind of like warm to the touch. And this is just gonna help kind of um, dissolve our yeast. So I'm gonna kind of whisk this around a little bit and break up some of the chunks. So we just wanna kind of get it a little bit dissolved. We've dissolved our yeast. We're gonna add our sugar, salt, and vegetable oil. So we're gonna do two teaspoons of sugar. That's gonna help actually kind of like activate our yeast and get it kind of bubbly and going. Um, one teaspoon of salt and one tablespoon of 
vegetable oil. So you just want to incorporate this and kind of get that sugar and salt mixed in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start to add our flour. From the King Arthur Baking Company. So this is a pretty well respected <laughs> um, flour brand. Way more respected than King John Baking Company. Sure. Robin Hood Jones. You know I've never seen that movie. Like any of them? There's a bunch of Robin Hood. Like the animated one. Oh. Or like any of them. Like our Robin Hood men in tights? No. That's my favorite. Who's in that? Dave Chappelle. Oh, that's fine. This is bread flour. This is specific for making bread. Anything with like yeast in it. And on this, it even says, ideal for yeast breads, pizza crust, rolls, and more. Not that you care about it. Although I care, so maybe some of you will care. Yeah, people want to know. People want to be your friend. <laughs> All right, so um, what we're gonna do is half a cup at a time add in our flour. We don't want to add in all of our flour at one time. We want to kind of slowly incorporate it into our liquid. So I'm gonna start with half a cup. Um, and in our recipe it says three and a half to four and a half cups of bread flour. So that's a pretty wide range. Um, and so this really, you were just looking for um, kind of like a smooth dough. You don't want it to be too sticky. So I added another half a cup. I'm gonna incorporate this. You wanna kind of make sure you don't have any, you know, huge like lumps of flour. You wanna kind of just make sure it's nice and smooth. I have been mixing this with a spoon. This is starting to come together enough that I can kind of now, I'm gonna actually switch, um, switch my hands and kind of just roll my ball around. It's still pretty shaggy, you can see. Um, so we're gonna keep working it. Um, right now I think I'm at three cups of flour. Now what do you mean when you say shaggy? So, well, it's it's a little bit more, but like, you know, it's kind of, mm. it's not totally smooth, right? Like It's still kind of Like a dog that, that hasn't been washed. Right. So we'll probably... Soy scoops! <laughs> add a little more flour. Weren't you, um... What's oh, your I was head? Daphne for Halloween this year. Alright, I'm gonna add a teeny bit more flour. Again, this is sort of like, if you're... Kind of just have to look at it, right? Kind of just gotta get a, gotta feel it, right? If it's too wet, you want to add more flour. If you feel like it's a little too dry, you can always add a very small amount of vegetable oil in. Uh, but you just want to be careful you don't add too much. But that's just if, if you feel like your dough is really dry. So again, really what you're looking for is you want it to not be sticky. So you'll notice this. I've been kneading and mixing with this hand. But if I grab it with this hand, right, it's not sticky. It's not sticking to my hand. So that's a good sign. We don't want it to be too sticky. I'm gonna do a little bit more flour and then we are going to knead this. Does this bring you back to El Pueblo History Museum? This does remind me of making tortillas. At El Pueblo History Museum, uh, well, on the field trips, you get to go into the recreation of the original trading post uh, and uh, students, kids get to roll out their own tortillas over a live fire. It's pretty, pretty awesome. I did it so many times, hundreds of times over my three and a half years uh, as the education coordinator down there at El Pueblo History Museum. We, and then in the summertime, it's opened up to the public uh, and for special occasions, special events. So yeah, making this dough uh, reminds both Megan and I as we both work down there. Uh, making so many tortillas with all those little adorable kiddos. All right, so now that we have our dough, right, it's in kind of it's a pretty smooth ball. Like I said, it's not very sticky. Um, we are going to knead this. And so what I'm going to do is sprinkle some flour on my countertop so that I can knead it and it um, doesn't stick to the counter. 
and we are going to need this for eight minutes. Which, if you've ever... It's, it's like the length of a fish song, or a Grateful Dead. Yeah. That's all, actually, that's only like a short, bit. that's like a studio version. So we have kneaded our dough for eight minutes and it's nice and smooth and we have this beautiful little ball of dough. And what we're gonna do is put this into a greased bowl. So you want a clean bowl. Um, you can wipe it with olive oil or vegetable oil. Um, I'm just gonna spray it because it's a little bit easier. But you just wanna do this to make sure it doesn't stick. And then what we're gonna do, set it in our bowl and we are going to let this rise. Uh, the instructions say to let it rise for one hour or until this has doubled in size. So you want to just kind of take a mental picture of what it looks like before, and in about an hour we'll look at it again, and hopefully it'll kind of, it'll have risen <laughs> and uh, doubled in size. Um, so I'm gonna cover this and set it um, on the counter and clean up, and we're gonna make our pizza spice blend. <laughs> These are the ingredients for our pizza spice blend. Dried oregano. Crushed red pepper. Garlic powder. My favorite, garlic salt. Onion powder. Parsley flakes. Dried basil leaves. Black pepper, pure ground. Not to be confused with the unpure ground. Unpure. Black pepper. Pure ground. That implies that there's an unpure version. Marjoram. Fennel seeds. Ooh, fennel. It's like Love Italian fennel. sausage. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Now. Now we are going to make the pizza spice blend. And this is just a combination of a bunch of um, dried herbs and, and some spices. This would be great for a date night in with your Valentine. Oh yeah, nothing like making pizza together. That's have fun. we done that before? We have done it before, yeah. Was it for Valentine's? It might have just been a, like a date, date night. Every day is Valentine's with Megan. Aw, because he's stuck in the house with me. He has to say that. So what we're gonna do essentially is just mix, um, you know, measure out and mix these um, in a bowl. And then once we're ready to make our pizza, we'll use it. Okay, so we're gonna do one tablespoon of dried basil. I'm, I'm pretty sure too that Megan had all these spices before. We didn't have to buy a single. <laughs> it's not true. Quite the spice we, cabinet over here. We had to buy marjoram oh. because we did not have that. I don't know if I've ever used marjoram. Sounds like an old timey name. Yeah. Oh, marjoram is coming over. Yeah. For all you whippersnappers, extra, extra, marjoram on sale. Marjoram. All right. One tablespoon of dried oregano. One tablespoon of dried marjoram. Two tablespoons of dried parsley flakes. And then we are gonna do one teaspoon of garlic powder. One teaspoon of ground black pepper. So I've talked in other videos about how I prefer freshly ground black pepper. We happen to have this already ground black pepper. So I'm gonna use that because it's easier to measure. 
But we bought that because it sticks to my popcorn better. Yeah, we make pop we make homemade popcorn a lot, and Jeremy likes just salt and pepper. I'm a purist. Um, I'm like a I feel like you're like a minimalist, and I'm like a maximalist with popcorn. I have this like very elaborate popcorn seasoning. Two teaspoons of fennel seeds. I love fennel. Uh, I would say if you don't like fennel, don't put this in there. I'd say if you're not, if you don't like fennel, stop watching right now. No, I mean, we won't be friends. Turn it off. No, this is an all-inclusive cooking show. Don't watch your support. Your anti-fennel list. Get your negative attitude out of our fennel based kitchen. Uh, also amazing, garlic salt. That's why I buy it in this big container. Hey, that reminds me of uh, my go to garbage disposal instinct. If you got, because they only sell hot dog buns in eight packs, <laughs> and there's only two of us, so it's like, okay, well, what do we do with the leftover hot dog buns? Hear me out. You open it up. You spread your your butter or your country thyme. Country thyme? No, that's the lemonade. Country crock. Country country crock uh, <laughs> margarine on the hot dog bun, uh, and then sprinkle in your garlic salt. Boom, boom. It may not be sliced French bread, uh, but you've got some garlic bread from your leftover hot dog buns. This, um, I think this would be a fun. I think any pizza recipe is fun to make with kids. And they could learn a bunch of spices. Yeah, like it's fun to talk about, you know, you could also use it as an opportunity to talk about how drying herbs and and meat and fruit is a way to preserve them and make them last a long time. It's like the time when you were teaching homesteading and we took all Simon's basil uh, and then you, you had the kids dry it in the microwave for your... You only had an hour. You only, yeah. you only had, oh, it's even better. It does. Made the entire museum smell like basil. It was awesome. Italian restaurant. It was really fun. Yeah, I, you can tell I've taught a lesson on that before. Um, I shouldn't say all Simon's basil. I would imagine Nick probably did most of the uh, tending to the herbs. Yeah, I think it was more Nick. But both, both. But don't, mainly Nick. Don't come for me, Simon. I love you. <laughs> um, Simon's like, what? I'm the basil king. Anyway, we really, this conversation really got away from me. Um, yes, we're still on garlic salt. Okay, so you do <laughs> one tablespoon, and I made sure I read this right, because like, we know garlic salt, you know, is is powerful, it's great. Um, a tablespoon, yum. Yeah. I'm very happy about it. Mm -hmm. And, almost done, with our marathon of spices. One teaspoon of onion powder, which I feel like is underrated. I use onion powder in my popcorn mix. And then last but not least, a pinch of red pepper flakes. Remember when the delivery pizza places used to deliver crushed red pepper with every pizza? Yeah, does that anymore? No, I haven't. When's the last time you saw a crushed red pepper? That's true. And a delivery pizza. Not in Papa John's. No. They also don't do the. Do they still do the pepper and genie things? Papa John's, I think, does that. I, love I know they that. did it when I worked there, but you used to get crushed red pepper with every pizza you ordered. It's. I, I think everyone talks about airlines skimping on the perks. No one wants to bring up. Pizza. The fact that we don't get crushed red pepper. Okay. Got all the spices. This is all in here, and I'm just um, mixing this together. Ooh, that smells so good. Yeah. I'm gonna show you. This is what our dough has done. It's almost the full size of this bowl. And it has been about an hour. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna punch this down and divide it in half. And then we're gonna roll out a pizza. Oh wow, you really punched it. We do. You wanna like release some of the air. Oh, is that the how gas, it works? Yeah, the gas that's like built up. 
Okay, I'm gonna cut this in half. We are going to roll out this into, so, okay. If you have a pizza pan, that would be ideal. We don't make pizza enough for me to ju justify having a pizza pan. So I just have a regular sheet pan that we're gonna use. Uh, but I'm just gonna roll this out to like a good size. Ooh, this is only for show. I only do this once Oh, yeah, no, you have done this before. Oh, careful. Careful. Yeah, you <laughs> It's stressing me the out. only entertainment. Oh, wait, scoot bottom. over. Oh, don't don't oh. get the light. It really doesn't benefit you too much. It kind of stretches it. Yes. But you got to really get the edges to, to really stretch it out. They learned this at the old Papa Jazz. Oh, that's, that's stressed out. <laughs> Okay, so what do we think about this size? Perfect. Perfect. And now for the fun part. We are going to... Wait, that wasn't the fun part? <laughs> well, I mean, the fun part is the topping. I thought it was throwing the dough. Oh, I, that was more stressful for me. <laughs> but um, we have our oven set to 450 degrees. And really this again is up to you um this recipe does not have specific instructions for toppings these are the toppings for our pizza you can do any toppings you want these are the ones we're doing classic pepperoni marinara sauce of course some cheese we're going to use mozzarella parmesan jalapenos pineapple Hey, hey, don't judge us. Pineapples are fine. We are a pro pineapple on pizza. This is a divisive issue. Let us know what your thoughts are. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? It's a definite yes. I mean, you could get really fun with it. We're gonna keep it pretty basic, but. I wouldn't say uh, pepperoni jalapeno pineapple. That's not basic. Okay, fine. Try it out, you get the, you get the sweet, uh, with the pineapple, you get the spicy with the jalapeno, and then you get your protein slash best topping of all in the pepperoni. I'm making an executive decision to do pizza sauce, but again, if you want to be totally true to this recipe, it does not have sauce. You could make your own. Um, I like this brand and I think it's good, so I never and then we're gonna sprinkle our, oh god. Ah, be careful, <laughs> our pizza spice. Okay, and then we're gonna do our toppings. So, we are doing pepperoni, jalapeno, pineapple. The cheese we're using is mozzarella, classic, and probably a little bit of parm. Pepperoni. Like that you one. It's fun that you're actually doing it this time. <laughs> That's so much pepperoni. Yep. Look, the student has become the teacher. <laughs> Cheese to hold down the pepperoni. Oh dang, is this how you feel? All right, so now we're gonna add a little bit of cheese. To, you know, talking to the camera and such. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I do all the time. I mean, I just chime in with charming anecdotes. Usually I'm not actually cooking. So we're gonna add a little cheese to hold down, <laughs> hold down the pepperoni. Um, also, that cheese is gonna help incorporate our jalapeno bits. Do you wanna get a start pineapple? The cheap pineapple. They didn't, I couldn't find any other. No, they, Dole. No, they only had, um, well, they had Dole, but they were like the big pieces. Oh. Uh, that's not the size of the pizza. We have done sauce, our pizza spice, cheese, 
a bunch of pepperoni, uh, a little more cheese, jalapenos, and pineapple. I'm gonna finish it with a little bit of Parmesan, and then we'll put it in the oven. And I'm gonna show you. Can you see? Cool. Kind of get it dark now. And we're gonna put this in for. I'm gonna say. We're gonna do 10 minutes at first and then I'm gonna check it. Okay, I baked this for about 17 minutes. Oh, this is dangerous. Can you see it? Don't touch this. Ah! Anyway, it looks delicious. Uh, pizza. Uh, uh, huh? Huh? <laughs> and we do have another uh, set, another thing of dough. Right? We cut it in half. So we're gonna make another pizza later, but we're gonna enjoy this one right now. Thanks for joining us. I hope your gourmet pizza was as good as ours. Trust me. Pineapple is a pizza topping. I will argue that to the death. Um, but rather than do that, how about we just learn a little bit about the Eisenhower Tunnel. All right, so our Across Colorado cookbook actually has some recipes that have stories attached to them, and that's the case with our gourmet pizza today. So I'm going to read the story that goes along with this recipe, Tunnel Closes, Pizzas Sell. When the Eisenhower Tunnel was completed, front range skiers cheered loud and long. No more driving over Loveland Pass with its blowing snows, icy curves, and potential avalanches. Winter driving problems were solved, or so Coloradans believed. But Mother Nature has the last laugh, and to this day, adverse weather conditions can make mountain roads impassable, and the tunnel closes a few times each winter. As always, one man's blizzard is another man's bonanza. In the early 70s, enterprising employees at a Silverthorne restaurant saw opportunity in the closed tunnel and the lines of cars with no place to go. They dressed warmly and made runs to the waiting cars, taking orders for gourmet pizzas. Then they would run to yell the orders through the kitchen window, run back to take more orders, take them to the kitchen window, get their first orders to deliver, and do it again and again. Gourmet pizzas lightened the moods of anxious and tired skiers, soothed hot tempers, and probably averted accidents. Soon, gourmet pizzas became famous. Busloads of ski clubs from Kansas and Nebraska began to load up on gourmet pizzas before heading home. 